From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time. Transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan and Black Ivory. Stories about the Marwa tribe had drawn Tarzan to the far mountain country, where, according to the legend of the lowland, there lived a super race. The people had been described as seven feet in height, and it was said that they could wrestle with Sheeta, the panther, outrun Bara, the deer, and bend a young tree for a bow. The legend proved an exaggeration, but Tarzan did find the Marwa people exceedingly tall and handsome and strong. None possessed more of these jungle attributes than Velda, the dusky, dark-eyed daughter of the chief. Tarzan, not catch Velda. <laughs> I'll catch you, all right. Watch out. Here I come. <laughs> so I couldn't catch you, eh? <laughs> oh, Tarzan. Oh, Tarzan, help Velda. Aren't you a rock? <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, there you are. Oh. Well, then, do you uh, admit that I can swim faster than you? Tarzan swim faster and run better than any Marwa. And that is why my father, the chief, make Tarzan son of tribe. I'm happy about that, Velda. For I've never known any tribe as brave as yours. Uh, as ours. Never before have Marwa take stranger as son. And this only because Tarzan is mighty hunter and fisher. <laughs> well, if I'm a good fisherman, I'd better take these fish I speared back to the camp and clean them. Oh, no. No, Tarzan must not. What? Oh, that is job for Tarzan's woman. Tarzan's woman? Hmm? Oh, now, wait a minute, Velda. Oh, does not Tarzan like Velda? Of course I like you. And... Is not Velda beautiful in Tarzan's eyes? I think you're as lovely as the blossoms of the jungle acacia. But you are the promised one of Kalo. Oh, no more. Not since night Tarzan bested Kalo in wrestling contest. No, only Tarzan can marry daughter of chief of great Marwa tribe. When Goro the moon comes to fullness again, Velda will become... Tarzan, slave forever. I don't like that word slave, Velda. Hmm? You'll never be any man's slave, not mine nor anyone else's, so long as I have strength with which to fight. The reputation of the great Marwa tribe had spread even so far as Port Said on the edge of the distant Mediterranean. There, in a ramshackle building on a narrow side street, a man in the flowing robes of the Bedouin thought about these great, strong people as he waited for a caller. Enter. Uh, I can hardly see. Is that you, Ajib? It is indeed, Captain Marco. Ajib ben Zaman bid you enter and close the door. Okay. Come near to me, mighty captain of the sea. You're going to hold that mighty captain of the sea business and tell me what all this mystery's about. I know of no mystery, my worthy captain. Not much you don't. Sending one of those Hawkeye messengers to my ship and making me meet you here in this part of town. What do you want? Your tongue is sharp, friend, for one whose ship cannot find cargo among the reputable merchants of Port Said. All right, so you found out I'm broke. So what? Ajib ben Zaman wishes but to improve the fortunes of his friend. I know of rich cargo for your ship to carry to distant ports. The kind of cargo you ship is too risky. Ah, but this time it is neither the seed of the poppy nor the guns our government has elected to term contraband. 
What then? This time you shall carry black ivory. Black ivory? To translate the jargon of a crass world, slaves. Slaves? In this day and age? There are still many markets, including countries which claim to be opposed to all forms of slavery. Well, maybe so. But I'm not getting into a racket like that. I think you are, Captain Marco. There is much Ajib Ben Zaman could arrange to have the port authorities learn about some of your past cargoes. Well... Uh... You will profit handsomely. My emissaries tell me of a Marwa tribe whose people are tall and handsome and strong. They will bring many pieces of gold. Uh, suppose I agree. How do you know I'll still be in port when you bring them back? Because I'm taking you with me, Captain Marco. My men wait outside this hall now. One will carry a message back to your ship. A message wherein you command your crew to await your return when your business in the jungle is completed. How do you know I won't spoil your game? I have planned long for this. I have come many days' journey for this meeting in Port Said. Anyone who attempts to spoil my game will die. I care not if the infidel is a man of the sea or a creature of the jungle. We will return to Tarzan in just a moment. whistle of the Cape to Cairo railroad engine sounded in the night. And aboard the train traveling from Port Said to Fashoda in the Sudan country were Captain Marco, Ajib Ben Zaman, and the cunning sheik's two fierce Bedouin followers, Kedur Ben Husam and Bader Ben Jafar, who sat in a corner saying nothing, but their hands remained on their cuses, and their narrow eyes seldom left their sheik and the infidel dog sea captain. Why do they keep sitting there staring at me? Perhaps they doubt your full enthusiasm for our plan. Yeah, maybe uh, they're right. Four men gone into the jungle to try to capture a whole tribe of huge savages. When we leave the train at Fashoda, we will be met by my men. More than a double score of cunning shiftas skilled in the art of taking slaves. I see. They will have with them camels and fleet Arabian horses the tools of their trade, and the wherewithal for a comfortable menzil. Menzil? Encampment. Oh. Forgive me for forgetting that you are a cultured foreigner who knows not the crude language of Mohammed. Yeah. Well, so these shifter guys catch the blacks. What then? We return all the way to Port Said by caravan and load them directly into your ship. And yeah, no one stops us or asks questions, huh? No one questions the content of a closed packing case unless there are sounds of protest from within. Yeah, that's just the point. You think those blacks aren't going to scream murder? For those that babble, there is always the heated iron that removes the tongue almost painlessly. The weeks passed, but the moon had not yet come to its fullness, and Tarzan wrestled with the problem of breaking off with Velda without causing her hurt or making angry his brothers of the Malwa tribe. Already one of them, Kalo, to whom Velda had been promised, looked upon Tarzan with unfriendly eyes. This day, Tarzan walked from the camp deep into the jungle. Following him at a little distance came Velda, and following her stealthily came Kalo. I heard someone. Who follows me? It is but your promised one, Velda. You should not follow me, Velda. Especially not when I walk into the jungle. Why does Tarzan wander away from the Marwa camp? I am not used to being with people all the time, Velda. Perhaps I shall never learn. Oh, when the moon comes full and we are married, then Tarzan be real son to my father. And then perhaps... It will be easier in the mind. I'm afraid not. 
Velda, how can I tell you? What what words are there to explain that I can't marry you? Tarzan would shame Velda before the tribe. He has claimed her in ceremonial wrestling match. And now... Hush! I hear someone. Though the wind is against us, I sense the coming of enemies. I care not for enemies. If Tarzan will not have Velda, then she... Be still, woman. Who comes? I come. Kalo. What do you want, Kalo? Why do you follow me? Tarzan take Kalo's woman, and against law of tribe, he steal into woods with her before nuptial feast. I did not steal into the woods with her. I came for a walk. She followed to talk to me. Kalo see Velda cry. Surely Tarzan bring dishonor to tribe. Marwa make mistake when he take Tarzan a son. Tarzan not true Marwa. I am sorry, Kalo. But Kalo change mistake of tribe. Cleanse name of Marwa tribe with Tarzan's blood. Oh, no, Kalo, no! Stop! Kalo's knife flashed high over his head and came down with terrific speed. But the sinewy hand of Tarzan caught Kalo's wrist, and the knife dropped to the ground. A moment later, Tarzan's knife clattered to the ground as he fell with Kalo on top of it. The men rolled over and over, locked in savage struggle. Zelda turned her back and ran right into the path of another spectator, Bolgani, the gorilla. Picking her up in his gargantuan arms, he hugged her to his hairy bosom and fled through the forest with her as Tarzan and Kalo continued to struggle. Uh, wait! That's Velda! Velda in trouble! Help! Well, God, he's taking me away! Come, Tarzan! We're coming, Velda! Behind those rocks, Kalo, see them! No knife and no bow! Could not shoot anyway! Hurt Velda. Uh, Bolgani's putting her down. It's getting ready for us. Now. Help him, Kalo. Help him. No. No, Kalo, take Velda back to village. Run. No, Kalo, help. Kill us both! What will happen to Velda? Take her! Run! Come, Velda! Oh, no. no, we cannot leave him. I won't. What Tarzan say is true. I must take you and run. I carry you. No, no don't make me leave him. Don't leave Tarzan. Tarzan will kill you. Velda and Kalo were forgotten as the two animals of the jungle, man and gorilla, fought for their lives. The gorilla's huge claws ripped into Tarzan's flesh. The leaves and the dirt were red with blood. Now Bolgani grasped Tarzan about the middle and began to squeeze with the enormous strength of his tremendous arm. Tarzan's breath left his body, and his mind began to cloud. And then suddenly Tarzan's powerful hands found the gorilla's bull-like neck. They closed around the huge throat, and they squeezed tighter and tighter. Tighter. At last, Bulgani's arms relaxed. The hideous jungle creature fell to the ground. Tarzan stumbled a few steps, and then he fell at the base of a great tree, exhausted. Only then did an interested group of spectators emerge from behind the large rocks and walk to the scene of the savage battle. The savage is unconscious. Yeah, did you ever see a fight like that, Bedouin? No, Captain Marco. Never before have these eyes seen such a struggle. The gorilla dead? He has gone to his maker. Men, tie up the savage. Tie him up? Can't you see that he's white under that bronze? We're not hunting for white men. What we do with an Azraini is to be decided by Sheik Ajib ben Zaman. He has a great reputation for wisdom and for his own particular 
land of mercy. We'll continue with our story after this message. So you are Ben Zaman. My subjects call me by that name, but I find your form of address and your manner exceedingly impertinent for a prisoner. When I regained consciousness, I told your men I'd come willingly. But your subjects insisted on prodding me and keeping me tied up. Tarzan is not used to such treatment. Tarzan? You are the famous Tarzan? Some call me Lord of the Jungle. Kador, why have you taken this man prisoner? Untie him at once. I told him he was making a mistake. You are wise, Captain Marco. Here, I'll cut the bonds myself. <laughs> ah, thank you, Benzaman. I was told you were a wise man and you live up to your reputation. I apologize for what has transpired. You are my guest. Yiban, bring coffee and viands. Pray be seated, Tarzan. Captain Marco. Kador. I, uh, I shall sit with you, but I eat not the food of the Muslims. You will excuse me? Can't say I blame you, son. Coffee, they call it. Full of cloves and cinnamon. So sweet it makes you sick. And the food, like some dive in Damascus. I forgive your crude remarks, Captain Marco. And I excuse you from sitting with us. Yeah, that's fine with me. Good luck to you, Carson. Thank you, Captain Marco. I cannot apologize enough for the indignities you suffered at the hands of my men, Tarzan. Perhaps you will permit me to repay you by offering you the hospitality of my humble menzil. I am very tired. I will accept your kind offer. Hayat! Show Tarzan to obey it, containing a soft mat on which to sleep, and see that he has every comfort. May Allah grant you sweet dreams, Tarzan. You are most kind. I shall see you when the sun is in the heaven. I hesitate to question you, my sheik. But your actions furrow my brow with questions. Fool! Have you never before heard of Tarzan? No. Many times in the past has he thwarted the plans of slave raiders. And yet you treat him like a friend. We had him tied, helpless, and you... Had and... we plunged a cusa into him while he was bound, every native and every beast in the jungle would have united against us. Yes? But instead we shall treat him as a dear friend... We shall persuade him to remain for a few days. By tomorrow night, any doubts he may have had about us will have vanished. We shall be filled with sorrow when he is discovered dead in the next morning. But you said... We shall find Captain Marco, the Nazrani, guilty of the murder. And we shall shoot him for his foul deed. That way we can cause no enmity. And with Tarzan out of the way, our hunt for black ivory will be simple. But won't we need Marco? When we return to Port Said, we shall commandeer his ship. In that way, we need not pay the dear captain his share of the loot. Who comes? It is Kador, my sheik. I bring a native who tried to steal by the sentries. Oh, -ho. he looks like a healthy young buck. Very strong and healthy, Buana. Only me not steal past centuries. Me come to see a great sheik need work. A native looking for work? Me outlaw from tribe. Much strong. Do work good. Well, uh, there is much work to be done about the menzil, and the shifters have little heart for it. What can you do? Care for camels and horses, hunt game, cook for sheik. Hmm. All right. You can sleep with the animals. And we'll pay you what you're worth. Me thank, Buana. What name do you call yourself? Name is Kalo. Who steals into my tent while I sleep? Hush, Tarzan. It is Kalo. Oh, Kalo? How did you get here? Did they capture you? No. Kalo, come to free Tarzan. But you are not bound. We sneak from camp now. Not yet. Do you know what these men are, Kalo? 
Kill or nose, the sign's plain. Ah, they fooled me for a little while. But when they thought I'd fallen asleep, I slipped out. I found a wagon full of wrist locks and leg irons. We can't leave until we force them to quit the jungle. But we'll need help. Kill or have plan. Get help with jungle drum. Send message to all of Marwa tribe when camp sleeps. But suppose they find you here. Arabs know Kalo here. Work for Arab as hunter and cook. Part of plan. In morning, Tarzan must pretend he not know Kalo. Leave now. Just a minute. Why did you come to save me, Kalo? Sorry for fight. Kalo did wrong. Tarzan brave Marwa. <laughs> That night, Kalo's drum sounded in the jungle, and from far off came the answer. The mighty Marwa tribe would send their fiercest waziri to fight the slave raiders, and they would follow the plan told them by the drums. The next day, the plan was whispered to Tarzan, and by the time the Arabs had gathered for their evening meal that night, the jungle that skirted the Menzil was alive with native warriors. They awaited the signal from the peaceful-looking bed of the sheik. Bring us our evening meal. Pray be seated, Tarzan. Captain Marco, Kador, Eben, the rest of you. My nose is assailed with a delicious odor. Kalo the Black has provided us with a rare treat. He has hunted in the woods all day and has returned to cook the fruits of the hunt. Ah, approach with the repast, Kalo. Uh, Kalo, bring food. Ah, meat much heavy. The entire animal turned on a spit. You are a rare jewel, Kalo. Meat is wappy, the antelope. Taste fine, only too much for few men. And Kalo have more meat to bring in. Call rest of men. That is a noble thought, Kalo. But all are present save for the sentries. Kalo in woods all day. No enemies near camp. He tells the truth. Our men comb the forest. No natives. If Gomangani were near, Tarzan would have caught the scent. Well, all right. Let the others come in. They've been restless and a good meal may help. Summon them, Kador. Now then, the food. Yeah, looks like good seafaring grub for a change. One must admit the jungle furnishes fine food for those who know how to capture it, Tarzan. The jungle holds no mysteries for those who are part of it. But for those who would destroy it, there is much danger. A month I've waited for a decent meal. Ah, here are the others. Enter, men. Partake plentifully of the meat. Halo, more food. Let Halo bring. Here is fine roast animal with an aroma like rich perfume. Oh, this is something like eaten. This meat Captain Marco asked for. Huh? This porta, the boar. A boar? Oh, the greatest of insults. Bringing the flesh of a swine to the table of an Arab. And you ordered it, Captain Marco. I swear I... Taunting us about our coffee and our food and then this insult. No man can insult the faith of Egypt Ben Zaman. Look, I never... Was. You sneaking infidel dog! Do you can't slap me, you rat! Without Egypt is reaching for his gun. Oh. And as the Arab sheik fell, pandemonium broke loose. Kador dropped. Marco fell with a cuse in his heart. And as the confusion mounted, a horde of fierce waziri flooded into the tent, wielding wicked knives left and right. And Kalo and Tarzan led the battle until no Arab remained in the menzil of Ajib ben Zama. The full moon has come, people of Marwa tribe, and we are met for the marriage of Tarzan and Velda. Are you ready for this marriage, my daughter? Yes, my father. Are you ready for this marriage, Tarzan? Great chief, members of the Marwa tribe, before I came to your village, Velda was the promised one of Kalo. 
I won her from him through a wrestling match that was meant to prove me braver than he. But since then, many things have happened. I was caught by the Tamangani, and I was forced to go to their camp. But the brave Kalo came willingly into the camp of the enemy to save my life and to save all Mawas from slavery. He has proven himself bravest, and I cannot claim Velda for my bride. You have spoken true, my son, and I decide. Velda, would you take Kalo as husband? Kalo and Velda promised since childhood. Velda, take Kalo with happiness. Kalo, would you take Velda as wife? Kalo embraces Velda as wife and Tarzan as greatest of Marwa tribe. So be it. Let nuptial feast begin. We'll tell you about our next story in just a moment. In our next story, we relate the experience of Tarzan and the Hooded Death. Nowhere in the jungle is a danger so great as the one to be feared from the Hooded Death. Elephants and lions and tigers shrink from its approach. Savages scream at the mention of its dread name. And you too will feel the chill of terror in the story we relate. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production.